All right, guys, welcome to our first lecture of the new year and our new class, which is sport marketing. Um, just kind of let you know, guys, these lectures for this class will be um, longer than normal just because I'm trying to get the most useful information I can get to you guys. So I'll go through them rather fast, but on Canvas, I will post the presentation with the audio and without the audio for you guys. So just a little bit of set in the background. This lecture is going to talk a little bit about just the very basics of sport marketing. And then we're going to get into talking about the sport product. Understand that the first two weeks of this class is really going to focus on our organization. And the reason is the biggest mistake that people make when they start to market a sport or an organization is they don't understand their own organization. They don't understand their marketplace. They don't even understand what they exactly do and what they do well. And so we're going to spend some time on that. Um, I would highly recommend in this class that you use uh, your own organization or an organization you're interested in um, to base your assignments on, to base your discussion post on. It will make your learning so much better. So a couple of things. Understand that we operate in a very competitive marketplace, guys. Um, people only have so much money to spend on leisure activities, and we're in competition with all those. There's just a lot more opportunities, uh, whether it be uh, via the internet, via social media, um, than people to come watch or or consume whatever product we have. So you have to understand it's it's going to be competitive, um, and un ain't you know getting our part of that market is hard. Okay, some sports um, are are in decline or plateauing at the at the very least. And so we have to understand where our sport is um, or our product is in, in the life cycle of, of everything else. Um, <clears throat> media has changed everything. Um, understand that people don't necessarily want to go see a game in person. Um, they want to watch a game via Twitter, via YouTube, via, via Facebook Live. Um, people don't read newspapers anymore. People are not like, don't like to read websites. They want to see pictures and videos. And so we have to figure out a way, and we'll, we'll talk about this a lot in this class, of how to embrace those things and use them to our advantage. Um, understand that um, grassroots sports are in trouble a little bit, guys. Um, almost every, uh, every facet of youth sport is in decline. Um, kids rather play video games and they would rather play sports. Um, and so we have to understand that. Um, that's the future of our sport uh, or our organization or our business. We have, to, we have to care about the grassroots aspect of it. So looking at what sport marketing is, um, it's, it's a, a, a big conglomerate of activities that are, that are basically um, wanting to meet the wants and needs of sport. Uh, sport consumers or people who consume our product um, and people can consume a product in different ways depending on what it is that we do um, they may play it they could officiate it. they could watch it they could listen to it they could read it they could collect it just depends on what your organization is and really there's two major facets of this guys and, and I put links to this stuff this week in some of the resources um, is you can market a sport product to a sport consumer, and that's what we're we're very used to. Um, you know, we're an athletic director, and we're trying to get people to come watch our events. That's marketing our sports. There's also marketing through sport, and this is honestly a bigger part of it. Um, you have to understand that people want to partner with sports because one, they like the passion people have. Um, they also it gives them an opportunity to meet. Uh, a similar, um, a similar uh, type of people that they're looking to try to attract. And so a lot of non-sport products will partner with sports for marketing. So Delta, um, Coca-Cola, those are people who are trying to reach that same sport fan base to help uh, hope that they can consume their own product. Um, and there's kind of a, a marketing myopia. Um, you have to understand that... Um, People are confused. There's a lot of things they're confused about. Um, 
One, that they don't understand what the wants and needs of their customers are or their market. They think that winning will, will solve everything when it won't. They get confused between promotions and marketing. Um, they ignore their competition, whether it be inside or outside. Um, they have poor pricing strategies, meaning that they try to, to raise prices um, thinking that rather than making a long-term investment. Um, they don't invest in research. Um, they have poor service or sales. Um, they just can be flat out laziness and they can get left behind, meaning that they can uh, fail to stay up with what the industry or market is doing and they get left behind. Um, we'll talk a lot about the marketing mix as we go into this class, but this is just kind of um, giving you an idea of, of product place, promotion price, public relations. We'll talk about most of those as we go in, but this is just kind of a chart that explains it. So getting into the sport product, like I said, the first thing we have to do is understand our own product. And understand a product is any kind of thing. It's a bundle, it's a combination, it's a quality, it's a process. It's what people are trying to get to satisfy what they want or need. And it's inconsistent. Um, a lot of times if we're, think, if we're talking about a basketball game, the game itself is only really a small part of it. Okay, and, and the person marketing that has a, not a lot of control over it, but it can be the, the promotions, the fans, the atmosphere. But we have to understand what it is our product is. So if I'm a basketball coach, my product is our style of basketball, our game we play, and all the stuff around that, our players, our coaches, our fans, our venue, our atmosphere. And so you have to figure out what that is. Um, and so... You're going to have the core elements of, of the games or, or the product, whatever it is, and then you have all these extensions outside of it. These are all things that enhance the atmosphere, enhance the um, experience that fans have. So the game presentation itself is a lot about what we think about. Okay. Um, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a, an, an organization, an experience, um, that um, is good no matter how our team's doing, okay? Um, we, we want to, and we can do, we'll talk a lot of, of ways of how we do that. We can do it through promotion. We can do it through, some of it's just organic. It happens with us making an investment in our team and people making an investment in our team. Um, and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to make a game presentation. We're trying to make it into something that people are excited to come to. And so, you know, the things that are core to that are, are the game itself, the players, how the fans act, you know, maybe the apparel, the venue. Um, and so we have all these extensions that, it, that enhance that. It could be our coach. It could be the tickets we sell. It could be if we have programs, the music, the mascots, video screens if we have it, um, memorabilia. And you don't have to have very many of these. Okay, some of it you're limited what you have, but you have to you have to invest in making what you have good. Um, so, you know, the, the game itself, uh, if, if we're a coach, we can control that. Um, but we might not necessarily be able to control winning and losing as a marketer. Okay, but we have to understand from a marketer, what is our game like? You know, what if somebody asks you to describe what it's like when you play your sport, what's it like? Is it intense? Is it high pace? Is it slow pace? Is it calculated? You have to understand that. Um, the people who, who play for you, whether it be coaches or players, are important. Even at the most small level, you can make a star player a big deal. And people will come watch them play if you will promote them. Um, your fans. Now, this can cut two ways. We don't want to. We don't want to promote fans if we have uh, not good ones, meaning ones that that get thrown out or, or make us look bad. But what I will say, and I'm going to give this an example because it doesn't apply to anybody in the class necessarily. If you ever come on a Sunday afternoon to watch uh, Reinhardt University wrestle, um, they have great fans. One, it's a great environment. It's, it's blacked out under a spotlight. 
but they have gotten they get fans there that are knowledgeable of the game they're of the sport they're very intense and i would argue on a sunday afternoon that's one of the hardest places in the nai to come wrestle because those fans are going to be all over you and it's a great environment um apparel could can be used for marketing Obviously, nice uniforms. People are drawn to flashy uniforms. Oregon has made a, an entire industry out of uniforms, and people are intrigued to see what they wear. Um, the venue. You have to make the venue as good as you can make it. And it doesn't have to be this big, giant arena. You can make a small arena very, very uh, memorable. Okay, And you have to put work into that. Okay, you have to you have to put work into being able to allow people who can't be there to watch what's going on in there so they might actually want to come attend. And so we want to market our core experience, what it is that we do well, our people, the memories you can make, what what you're going to see. And so obviously, you know, we'll talk about this in, in the next couple of weeks, but you know, we have to get people into our, our place. Okay, well, one of the ways we can get them in there is we can show them what it's like if they're not there. Okay, and we have to put, you know, that through social media and through video. Um, the people who work at our events have to buy into what we're doing. I mean, our personnel people, our event staff have to go out of their way to interact with people and make it a great experience. There's nothing worse than you go to an event, you deal with somebody who doesn't treat you well and you're likely not coming back and so we want to invent you know we, we want to emphasize kind of this aggressive hospitality meaning we want to be proactive okay we want our staff to be to go out of their way to help people to reach out to people to make their experience great and if they do have a complaint we want to address it we don't want to just ignore it um if we have tickets or electronic stuff we can use that um, a lot of small organizations don't have access to that, so they have to use social media, okay? Meaning that we can we can enhance things with music. We can enhance things with um, through Facebook, through Twitter, through Instagram, through promotions, through those. That's stuff we have to take advantage of if we have the ability to take advantage of it. Um, and we have to we have to um, try to incorporate as many of these things into our marketing strategy and. At the end of the class, you're going to develop a marketing plan for your organization. And essentially what we're trying to do is, is are these kind of four things. We're trying to differentiate our product. We're trying to develop it. We're trying to position it. And we're trying to brand it. Um, and we'll get into all of these more in depth. But for differentiation, we're trying to make it different from what other people do. We're trying to make them choose us over doing some kind of other leisure activity or buying some kind of other product. Um, this is kind of an example of, of how you differentiate the LPGA versus the NFL. Well, obviously, LPGA golf is high skills, low pace. Um, you're very close to the people. You have a real high chance of having an exchange with a with a professional. The NFL is very high skills, high pace, but you're distance from the action. You have a very low chance of 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 interacting with somebody. That's fine. You just have to understand what your game is. And so we're always looking to develop our game more. We're always looking to generate ideas and try other ideas, particularly when it doesn't cost us any money or very little money. Throw it out there. If it doesn't work, scrap it and go to something else. Okay. We don't, you know, if, if you're in a big organization, you can hire people to do analysis. You can test markets. For the level we're working at, probably we're just going to try ideas and if they look like they have promise, we're going to continue to develop them. Um, and, and that product development kind of means um, basically just kind of hashing it out, um, seeing what it looks like, um, maybe getting feedback from other people um, and trying to figure out how it we can make it work with our customers. And then once we do develop it more, we want to communicate those benefits to those customers. Um, how we position our products is important. Okay, we want to have a perception of our product in our customers' minds. 
Meaning if our goal is a basketball game or a basketball product that is fast paced with great defense and high intensity, then we have to figure out a way to get people to see that and think that. And that's what marketing becomes. Um, this is just kind of a chart that just kind of gives you an idea of, of high action versus high cost versus low cost. So this is what people are seeing in their mind um, of, you know, where can I go get the best action for the a reasonable cost? And high school or small college sports can provide this. The problem is that they're just not very good at marketing it. Uh, and then obviously the the ultimate goal is to develop a brand, you know, where people are aware of our brand. They have an association to us. They have a, a perception that we're quality and they have loyalty to us. They want to keep coming back. And that's just a process of getting people in to, in, to use your product and um, getting them to have a great experience. And we'll have a whole lecture about this. And understand that every product, guys, goes through a cycle. People are introduced to it. It has growth. It matures out. Then ultimately, it starts to decline. That decline might be from a change in coach. It might be from, um, you know, better, better alternatives coming along. So you have to understand where you're at in this process um, and, and be, be cognizant of it. And, you know, and so... You know, we, we have to, to understand that, you know, you're either growing or you're dying. You know, some some products are more volatile than the others. Some people are very, things are very predictable. Some things like technology, it will it will get really popular and it'll start to, um, to go away. Okay, I understand that brands ultimately are what win championships. That's what stays around the longest time and that's what we're trying to ultimately build as a brand that stays and has stay in power. So I hope you enjoy the lecture. I think you're going to enjoy this class, guys. I think you're going to enjoy the assignments. Again, apply them to something in real life and it will make the learning experience so much better.